Hello and welcome back to the Kid Code Project. Uh, this video is not part of the normal video series. It is actually um, a answer to a lot of requests about more information on event-driven programming. Uh, in video 3, we created the Allowance Generator program, which allowed us to move the No button, uh, basically to force people to get, give you an increase in your allowance. But in, in doing so, we had to use events. Um, let me open up real quick while I talk. Um, Event-driven programming is relatively new in the programming world, which means in the last 10-15 years. Before then, um, programs were very different. Okay? Okay, good. Here we go. The way it used to work is if you wrote a program, you actually had to write code to check for everything. Seriously. Um, was this button pushed? Was this um, scroll bar moved? Was this key pressed? Um, was this file opened? You know, these sorts of things. You had to write code for everything. You had to, um, for example, in a video game program, um, let's say you had a character on the screen moving around and he could go up, down, left, or right. And you would use up, down, left, right arrows. What your program would have to do is basically intentionally go through a loop. Was the up arrow push? No. Was the down arrow push? No. Was the left arrow push? No. Was the right arrow push? No. Back up. Was the left arrow? No. The up arrow push? No. Was the down arrow push? No. Was the right arrow push? Yes. And then your code would execute and then it would go continue. Was the left arrow pushed? Was the up arrow pushed? A lot of extra code. But as Windows has progressed and operating systems have gotten better, they've taken all of that away from um, from us having to do, which is a very good thing. So instead of having to write code to check for all these little menial things, the operating system does it, Windows does it. And the way programming works now with object, I'm sorry, with event driven programming, is that you create um, listeners, so to speak. Um, on the screen here, um, we have all of the no buttons from the I'm sorry, from the um, allowance generator program where we had the three no buttons, the one yes button, no labels and that sort of thing. And these are the events that we um, are looking for. Everything inside of this, this is called a subroutine, okay? Sub, I'll explain more about private and all that. But everything in between private sub and in sub, this code here, this code here will happen if the no button one, that's the name we gave that button, has a mouse hover event happen. But if a mouse hover event doesn't happen, this code will not execute. Which means this event listener is listening to the operating system all the time. And we don't have to write any code to make it do that, which is really nice. And when finally there is a mouse hover event where someone moves the mouse over that button and it hovers there for a moment or two, the event is triggered, our listener knows that it's happened, and this code is executed. It makes it so much easier to do things this way. Now, as you can imagine, events are basically what we use to have the program go in, in order, to make it do things in order. Um, for example, if you have a big program that has a lot of uh, text, people entering text, you know, their names and stuff, um, you can monitor, you can use these event listeners to actually listen for these events and then you can decide what happens to it, which is really nice, which is kind of basically what we did. In fact, let me pull up designer. Okay. There. I'm going to put it back to original size. So, here's how it works. F5 to run it. Okay. It's still got all that extra code we put in from the last. Okay. When we go to no, we the on hover event happens. The operating system sends that message to our program. Our on hover, our mouse hover listener sees it and executes the code. And then it happens again. And then it happens again. So it makes it much easier to write code. Now to wrap it all up, as you can imagine a very big program can have thousands of event listeners and it sounds like it's difficult to do but it's really not because what it lets you do is it lets you write very small pieces of code 
that only happen when an event happens instead of writing a huge piece of code to do everything because the, the more code you write in one subroutine the more likely you're going to make a mistake and doing it this way it takes all of the little events that can happen and it gives you a, an opportunity to write just a little bit of code for that event and you don't have near as many mistakes and it's much easier to control and manage now as a real quick one <coughs> I am going to get rid of these label things here now you may not recognize these but um, I actually was tinkering with this before I started the video so don't worry about that. This is what we saw in video three. Okay. Now what I'm going to do in Designer is I am going to add a text box, and a text box is what is used to get text from the person who uses your computer. Okay. Um, and just like everything else has properties. Okay. So we'll go into that in more detail later. In fact, later I'm going to have a small video for the most important of these tools. There'll be a a small video for text boxes alone just text boxes and then one for buttons and that sort of thing now what I want to do here is I double clicked it it takes me to the you know the code view and here is the event it automatically creates because it's the most common one right text change what this means is anytime the text inside the box changes the event will happen so let's do this I don't want you to worry about this this ampersand, which is what this is right here. We're going to go in that more detail a bit later. And this part of the code, I don't want you to worry about it as well. Okay? But I just want you to see how the event happens. Okay? Okay, F5, there it is. Let's go into the text box. Nothing has happened. The on hover event isn't active. We don't have a listener for it. There is no enter. Um, event listening um, for it even though those events are actually happening since we don't have a listener our software ignores it but if we change the code let's add the letter I the event for the text changed happened so our code executed the text is I now what's going to happen if I put a space has the text changed yes and the code happens again there's actually a space right here but you can't see it because it's a space now I'm gonna type in D and here it is the event happened again so it took the text and it put I space D okay I same thing the event happened and our code executed exact same thing again it's now I space did because that's what the text is because the text change in the event happened space again I T so as you can see every time the text in the text box changes that event happens and our event listener sees it and executes that code and instead of having this much code to do it we did it with one line it makes it very useful I hope that answers everybody's questions on the event driven program we will be using events in all of our programs going forward so you'll get more used to it but I hope that now you have a better understanding of how it works overall and we're done for now it's time for you to go on to video number four and I will see you later